I'm here with Henry Belmonte of VJB. This place is a winery, it's a restaurant, it's a family establishment, and Henry, I, I want to hear all about it. Tell, tell us the family aspect and sure. what's your role here. Sure. Well, um, I, I often kid that uh, I'm the mortgagee, right? I, and every time the bank calls, I have to take that call. Um, short of that, we're here just to make sure that everybody enjoys himself. Um, from my mother and father, to myself, to the entire team. So, you know, you, that comment about being a winery and, and some of these other things, yes, technically we're a winery, but the truth of the matter is the VJB Sellers property is a hospitality center. Yeah. Because when people come to visit us for our wines, they're pleasantly surprised by this sort of Tuscan, little Italian village that they found, that they find. Um, it's, it's a place where we serve, we have a beautiful delicatessen serving traditional Italian paninis and uh, Italian meats and cheeses. We have the outdoor restaurant uh, that does uh, wood-fired pizzas and we have a chocolate and gelato shop. We have a boutique store. We have a retail country store that does coasters and, and kitchen type wear so it's, it's really a place where yes you come for the wines but then you're sort of you taken back for, by everything else yeah. that, and you do you yeah. stay quite a bit so how did we get there right yeah. we well we were in the restaurant business for many years um, had an Italian restaurant in downtown Santa Rosa uh, the family and myself and um, my brother and I had always had this sort of vision of making Italian wines for mm -hmm. our guests at the dinner table of the restaurant and uh, uh, my brother Victor um, and I set out to do just that. Unfortunately, shortly after the project started to take root, he passed away uh, suddenly. And uh, I decided uh, to move forward with the idea of honoring him. And uh, so the, the VJB are his initials, Victor Joseph Belmont. And so that was my tribute to him. Uh, and and not, not, not in a, not in a, mournful way as much as it was in a celebratory way celebrating and, his life absolutely I love and, it. and 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 so the uh, Italians do that they yeah love life. we do it very well yes, yeah we yeah in fact we'll use any excuse to to open up a bottle of wine <laughs> at any point <laughs> in the day really celebrate life that's Why right not? That's yeah what we're here for. yeah and, and so this has been sort of a, a slingshot into other things uh, our own pasta our mm -hmm. own sauces our own tapenades um, yes. And um, so, uh, again, this is everything that people can experience when they come mm, here for the first pesto. time. Pesto. So on the meatless menu today, we have this beautiful arugula salad and this amazing looking margarita pizza. Tell me, what's your inspiration for these dishes and is this a family recipe? Oh boy, uh, yeah. certainly the dough uh, that we make our, our pizzas from is a, um, I wouldn't say it's a secret recipe, but it's it's traditionally what my mother used to use in her hometown of Italy um, when they would cook flatbreads or, or, or bread. You know, bread was part of their dietary uh, consumption every single day because it was, it was relatively easy to make, it was inexpensive to make, and um, growing up in a uh, small town in Italy where the resources just weren't quite available. They needed to grow their own vegetables. They needed to essentially feed, feed themselves or, or fed for themselves. The, 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 the salad, uh, very, I, I, I'm a man of simplicity. I just, I, I think our food should express that as well. So uh, the arugula salad, some pistachios, uh, a lemon vinaigrette dressing, uh, some crumpled brie cheese, and that's it. It shouldn't it. be any more than that. I agree. It's very European. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, true. Uh, uh, as Let well. the flavors speak for themselves. The the margarita pizza, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the tomato sauce is homemade. Uh, the mozzarella is made in house. Uh, the basil is grown on uh, in our garden. Uh, and again, the, the dough is, is is our own recipe. And and so it's much like the restaurant that we used to own. Everything is pretty authentic. I mean, we stay true to our roots, and um, we could probably expand out of that circle a little bit and get out of our comfort level or comfort zone, as they say. But then I think you also invite doing something that maybe is not natural and organic, and we prefer to stay with that. That's simply why the, the wines at BJB are, they're Italian. I mean, that's what inspires us. So we decided to do Italian bridles. 
So this is the Barbera. This is this was really truly our first varietal that was our claim to fame here in the valley, and um, it was one of the first Italian varietals that we started to do when we when we uh, essentially uh, began the project a little over a decade ago now, and. Uh, to that, we've you know we've added Sangiovese and Montepulciano and Negro Amaro, uh, the Tokai, uh, Primitivo, Sacrantino. Um, the Italian varietals were some of the earliest grapes planted in the Sonoma Valley. A handful of wineries, a handful of our neighbors will do one or two Italian varietals, relatively easy. But but what we've done is we've essentially made our entire portfolio here at BJB. The Italian grapes and I think for that in addition to the food in addition to hospitality the, and some of the other things that we've talked about is the reason that we stand I wouldn't say above anyone else but we stand differently from everybody else well and, you're saying true to yourself well we're, we're saying true to ourselves in, and that's right? that's really the truth yeah. yeah. end of the wine that grows yeah. well here so shall we oh uh, absolutely it? please Cheers. enjoy salute oh, salute <laughs> yeah. So one, one thing I should say, oh, that's nice and pretty. the Italian varietals, it's beautiful. We, we, again, staying true to our roots, mm -hmm. we, we do the best that we can, working with our winemaker to replica what the Barbera might taste like mm -hmm. in Northern Italy. Um, but clearly, the grapes are grown here. They're grown with our climate. They're grown with our conditions. They're grown with, with our style. Um, but we often hear this is this is very close to what I had in Italy, yeah. or this is a very close Sangiovese that I've had in Italy. So, and that, um, especially when my dad, or my father's involved in that uh, in that conversation, it, I think it pleases him uh, quite a bit that um, uh, getting it right. we're getting it right. You yeah. are, you yeah. are. Thank you. So let's dig into this. Group. Please, of course, you dig have into to. This you... Vegetarian, meatless menu here, margarita pizza. And as my guest, I'm going to allow you to go first. Okay. Well, we can do it together. All right. I love it. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. Uh-huh. The brush is important. The heat of the oven is really important. The flavors. The sauce. Mmm. Mom sauce. I want to kiss your mama. I know. <laughs> I wish they were here. We can talk about mm -hmm. we can talk about all the flavors coming together and so forth. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still pizza, and keeping it as simple as possible, so just that all the flavors and and are, are coming together. But you know, you don't want too hard of a crust. You don't want it to be too doughy. Um, mm -hmm. and I think the boys got it right today. Mm, sure did. Oh, I want to say bellissimo. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. This My has pleasure. been amazing. My pleasure. My pleasure.